closing. Live from the green screen hangar inside the Norman School of Visual Effects. Without further ado, guys, what we have right here from my nearest left, we got Brad. Raise your hand there so everyone see, say hello. In the, middle, in the middle, we got Frank. Frank, go ahead. Okay. And then we got Michael at the very end. Okay, so Michael is going to start, and then Brad's going second and Frank's going last. Okay, so again, you can, we're gonna field questions with each of them, and they will all be up there at the end again when we start going. So, without further ado, I'd like to hand this off to Michael from Naughty Dog. All right. <laughs> all right, hi, how's it going? As an example, this is uh, the winter outfit that we did for Joel. If you played the game, it's like his brown winter jacket, he gets it like halfway through the game. Um, so for this, I was kind of going for like a big, like baggy jacket, lots of like big folds. Um, if you are trying to learn cloth, like in your personal time, I think it's something like this is a good way to begin because um, you're not getting too focused in on little details, you're like focusing on the big stuff. I can show you, I'm going to show you the base mesh that I started with for this. It's pretty simple. Just pretty much, it wasn't actually, it was just like a tube arms. Um, and then gradually, started to build up like the basic kind of like basic kind of shapes I was looking at reference um, and I like to use standard brush to kind of get these flow lines like this so I'm gonna also after this I'm gonna take like a just a normal base mesh and build it up uh, that's the wrong window I'm gonna start building up like part of this shirt just from a base mesh from scratch, so you guys can get a feel about how to do it from scratch. Again, I, mean, I feel like it's very important when you do this stuff to not be too attached to your, the final result, because you can keep kind of changing things around, find different combinations, um, whatever, whatever it is you want to do. This is flatten brush, I think it's awesome for doing certain effects. If you just want like a like a planar surface, is that um, any questions on this stuff so far? You want to know something how I did on this model? Just ask away. Otherwise, I'll just keep doing things. Uh, this is Anthony, everybody. Yeah. Hello. How did you do the um, uh, the tears and small holes on his jacket? Um, okay. So the standard brush, um, just going in like this, it's, fake, it's like a fake hole, so it doesn't actually go all the way in. And then I rely on like ambient occlusion in the texture to fake it even more. So I'm just beveling in with standard, and then around the edge, I'm just picking it off. This is all with the stand, same standard brush. So you could do an even bigger hole if you want. Um, just like that, go around the edge. Probably push that in a bit more. You can do some like trailey stuff. That's a typical thing I did on The Last of Us to make it look like it's frayed, you know, and like the fabric's coming off it. I guess it's not, the textures aren't super large. So stuff like this is pretty plausible, especially from a distance. Um, and if it was a hole this big, you'd probably want to have some kind of fake surface inside it. So you could see like his shirt underneath or whatever it was. Um, so that's, that's that, but uh, obviously there's all different kinds of methods you could use to make holes. So that's the same method, that's how I did this one here, just on the side, just pushed it in. It's almost like an afterthought while you're sculpting, you're just like, oh, I'm going to put a hole there. 
catch, catch the eye, whatever you want to do. That's it, okay, a round of applause. All right, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Brad! All right, so my name is Brad Smith, right? Uh, I'm a texture artist at Naughty Dog, a texture and shader artist. You know, a lot of this is just, a lot of it's hand sculpted. Actually, all of it's hand sculpted in ZBrush. Um, and one of the overriding principles as a texture artist at Naughty Dog, or actually just as an artist at Naughty Dog, is it's, it's form first, right? So the pillars of my workflow are about, you know, sculpting, getting quality form, and getting that in the game as fast as possible because I want to see if it works. And if it doesn't, I'm going to scratch it and I'm going to go back and re-sculpt it. I'm not going to bother painting a diffuse map and other maps if the form isn't working. So it's all about you know, working efficiently, but spending the time to be involved in the creative process, in the sculpting, and the exploration, form, rhythm, silhouette. Um, so those are going to be overriding principles of what I'm going to cover here. So, Let's dive right into ZBrush. Uh, so, and that's kind of really like a lot of what I do, right? So I'll, I'll pull out forms. Um, and by the way, I have subdivision levels on this guy, right? But let's say, you know, so first you've got, you know, when you're, when you're pulling stuff out like that, right, you're going to get a lot of smearing along the backside. So, um, so depth mask, right? That's going to control how, how deep that effect goes in, right? So that's going to help a little bit when I start pulling some of these forms out, and I can start detailing, and then you'll hold the Alt key, maybe bring in some other, some other things here. And that's going to help some of that smearing a little bit. And I found actually that maintaining subdivision levels, or if you don't have them, this is where I use Z Remesher uh, really quick, just to uh, you know, get some subdivision levels back, and then reproject. Um, we know if you're masking at a much lower resolution, right, just walk back up and you've got, you know, a much softer mask. Um, so it's a nice way to kind of, you know, grab that stuff and then you've got a nice sort of soft edge mask there. You can start pulling this stuff out. And then, you know, of course, one of my favorite brushes, right, uh, not too much magic to what I do. It's really just pulling out form and then knocking it back usually with like a you know, soft intensity, right? And then using other alphas to just keep layering. And this is where a lot of layers come in, right? So if we look at this particular asset, at its breakdown here, you can get a sense of you know, how some of these things are built up. And it's all that same sort of process, just dragging out alphas um, onto unmasked regions uh, so here I'm building it up, right? And this was probably one of those, you know, terrible sculpts that I didn't like, but works as an alpha, right? Knock it back, you know, do some more detail in some areas, and then uh, start, you know, bringing out more detail. Um, and it's just this constant layering process. And at any point I can go in and I can, you know, change up these layers. And somewhere in here there's a morph target too. We talked about uh, storing morph targets earlier. Um, but, uh, yeah, so it's just a really, like, building forms up and then knocking it back. And to me, it's just a lot of alpha work. Ladies and gentlemen, Brad. Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Frank Den, um, and I'm a character artist at Naughty Dog. I graduated last year, and uh, after that, um, I pretty luckily got hired at Sony San Diego. And at Layer, um, I work on um, Killzone 4, Puppeteer, uh, MLB 13, 14. Um, so yeah, just ask question as you go. So today's presentation, um, I will kind of go through my whole workflow. But first, I will kind of introduce my um, user UI. It's a very important. Um, it's very important on my workflow. Uh, it speeds my, it speed up my uh, sculpting very, you know, fast. So, yeah, let's just. And then I will show um, one of my uh, fan art piece, which is the Breaking Bad Water White. Um, I will show you guys how 
kind of proved that how I rendered it just in ZBrush because there being a lot of questions like where did I render it? Um, so I would show that and and um, I would show one of my uh, Game of Thrones fan art and just walk through walk you guys through like my workflow like layers all that stuff. This is actually um, you know what's the skin trader that I have. So I have two paths basically one to render out the skin, and the other one is just for the rest of it. Um, so right now you can see, you know, those are all the subtools that I have. And those are the render settings. So then um, I would just hit a BPR render. It took a long time to do it, but that's the result that I got just in ZBrush. And with that, I got you know all the layers that I want. You know, I got AO, I got shadow, I got mask, I got uh, substance scattering. You know, I got depth. So that's just render the face part and the beard as well. If everything's matching, let's say it is matching right now. I would just go to my documents, you now zap link, do a camera safe over here. So whenever I move, I work, and I would just go back, it's still there. So yeah, basically I would just save like one view in the front, one view from the side, and one view from the other side, and just keep working on those until I find a good balance and to get a likeness over there. All right, we got another question here, but Brad and Michael, if you wanna join the stage, we'll open it up completely to the three guys. So Michael and Brad, you wanna jump back up there again? We got another question right here for you though, Frank. Um, can you talk about how you uh, sculpt the eyes a little bit and how you keep them so clean? The eyes part? Yeah, how do you keep them so clean? Okay, um, this is actually a very important part I'm a workflow, so that's a really good question. Um, when I work everything, I started just the lowest one. So, as you can see, for this one, it's probably too low, but I'll go to the second one. If you can see, you have to make those edge loops very, very clean for production. Um, actually, like, what? You see the, you know, the eyelid between that? Like, the double eyelid part? If you see it in there, I can show you in there. I will use move brush to move each of this to make it more a lot smooth. This is already smooth because I've done that already, but you know, this is for the eyes part, it's a very important part in the production because you know if you want eyes to look natural, you have to do this. So if he got, you know, very deep double eyelid, I would just Again, I would just use this one. So I'd like to thank Noman for letting us be here. And again, I'd like to thank the guys at Naughty Dog, Frank, Brad, and Michael. Give them a round of applause.